there, chipmunks. Welcome to the AMV Cycling Ride Review Series. I'm Angry Chipmunk. Today, we'll be taking a look at a route from Ruby. It's the Old Dalin to Bricks Dalsbring Glacier route. So, let's get right into it. This is a short to mid-length ride at just under 40 kilometers long and mid-elevation at 437 meters. You can make this ride as difficult or as easy as you want it to be simply by pushing hard or backing off. I would suggest a medium warm-up of at least 5 to 10 minutes, but more if you're going to go hard. Enough to get warm, not enough to get tired. The start is pretty mild, so you can continue gently for quite some time. No need to be red zoned immediately. There are two climbs of note in this ride, both of which have Strava segments. You find it really handy to use these segment breakdowns that appear at the top of the screen to help with pacing. The warning that the segment is upcoming will tell you how long it is and how much elevation gain it has, but the graphic at the top when you actually start the segment will only give you the remaining distance. It's still quite useful though, so look out for them and be sure to use them. There are a few small hills before the first segment that are none too difficult. The Rake Strava segment comes just before the 5 km mark. It's about 2.2 km long and averages just 2%. However, about midway through, you will see a peak of 7%. This climb is easily achieved, big ring, and there's no real need to pace this one. The vast majority of this route is along the flat, following some fjords and their connecting rivers. It's easy going, and you're going to want to naturally push pretty hard. But the last climb does have a steep upturn at the end, so be sure not to push too hard and save a little bit of energy for that final ascent. The hills along the way are all generally quite benign. The last climb into Brixdalen is at about the 34 km mark. It's 4.4 km long with 139 meters of elevation gain. It does average only 3%, however, the last 850 to 900 meters of this climb is quite tough. You come around a corner and it immediately jumps into 10, 12, 14%. There are three main steep bits interspersed with short respites where the gradient does drop back to 5 to 6%. Use these well to try and recover a little energy. If you've spent all your energy too early, this one will be a little bit difficult, but if you've saved something, it's not too bad as it's only pretty short. It does end on a steep bit though, so if you've got the legs, be sure to push hard for a top 10 spot. The view on this ride is magnificent to say the least. There are large mountains surrounding the entire route. The fjords are a deep, rich blue-green, which is a beautiful contrast to the sharp greens of the countryside, which is a beautiful contrast to the dark blues of the mountains, which is a beautiful contrast to the low-hanging white-gray clouds. There's so much to look at along this route, it's easy to forget to keep pedaling. It's absolutely magical. And be sure to look out for the hidden sheep near the heart-shaped rock chipmunks. For this route, I would suggest pre-fueling with something around 20 grams of protein. This will ensure that you don't need to fuel again for at least 30 minutes or you can wait until about the halfway mark. If you're pushing along, aim for 10 to 15 grams every 20 to 30 minutes. You can have that if you're going easy. I prefer these smaller but more frequent intakes as it's a smoother release and prevents stomach upset and cramping. At around the 9 to 10 kilometers to go mark, have some fast acting carbs of about 8 to 10 grams to help with that final ascent. Something like gummy bears or a mini chocolate bar, something of that sort, anything will do. There's no real spots along this route where fueling should be a problem, so any point along it is fine. Follow it up with some protein if you've been pushing hard, but it's not really that necessary if you've taken it easy. A magnesium supplement is always helpful to help with recovery and prevent cramping though. Overall, this is a beautiful ride that is supremely peaceful. I would definitely recommend this ride. Well worth doing the whole thing for any mid-level and up rider. If the 40 km distance is something that you would regularly and easily do, then the hills will also be no problem for you. If that seems a bit far, you may have some difficulties with the final 1 km. Either way, be sure to save a little something for the end. You can, of course, just do part of the ride if the distance is too much. It's very serene and still very worthwhile doing. As this is a bit of a longer ride, it's not a good choice if you're short on time. I really didn't push all that hard and it took me about an hour and a half to complete. You should be looking to budget one to two hours depending on how hard you want to push. For this route, I would give it a five of five. It's perfect. It's not too hard, it's not too easy. The road that follows along the fjords and through the little towns is very enjoyable. 
For the climbs, I would give a 1 out of 5 for the first one. It's pretty easy, anybody can do it. And for the second, I would give it a 2.5 out of 5. The last 1 kilometer is more like a 4 out of 5 of difficulty, but overall it isn't that bad as it's relatively short. The difficulty comes in that it's the final thing that you do on the run. The view on this one, 6 of 5, without a doubt. Absolutely stunning. Very beautiful. Even the large cruise ship in port doesn't detract from the scenery. And overall, I would give this one a 5 out of 5. Definitely stick this one in your ride queue. Well, that's it for this review, Chipmunks. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this ride when you've completed it, and also let me know in a comment when you found those sheets. Ride on!